Hi, I'm Adam. This is Kevin. And we are Tech Guys Who Invest. This is the place for business people and investors to learn all about investing. We offer a fresh perspective on what it's like to have a day job while investing. And we share lessons learned on our investing journey. Our vision is to educate and entertain you while adding tons of value to your daily commute. Welcome to our show. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Tech Guys Who Invest podcast. On this episode, Adam and I have a little bit of fun, and we talk about the things that we're going to do when we get out of the rat race. Not if, but when. That's the mentality that we have because we are going to figure this out, we're going to make it, and we're going to teach all of you along the way. This fun episode is a great reminder that you have to have your vision in front of you. You have to have that dream be that light at the end of the tunnel because trying to get out of the rat race and trying to learn how to invest can be difficult and it can be draining. But when you have these types of thoughts and these dreams of, hey, what am I going to do? It is quite invigorating. And it's also fun to share it with somebody, some like-minded individuals, people who want the same thing or similar things as you. So here is what Adam and I are going to do when we escape the rat race. So, hey, Kevin, we're both working really hard to get out of the rat race. Yes. And being out of the rat race pretty much means having a day job is optional. And that is the dream. It doesn't doesn't mean you have to quit your job, but it does mean that that job is optional. So things are going to feel a lot different. And the people that I've spoken with that are in that position, they love the freedom, right? The option, the choice, instead of having to say, when I get out of bed, I have to go to work. I have to work. And even if you love what you do, there's still this subconscious idea that I have to do this as opposed to wanting to or having the option to. Yeah, that, that's what's kind of cool for me is I really do like my job a lot. I love my job. Um, or I I love what I do. But knowing that I don't have to do that to pay the bills would just change something about the way I felt when I went in in the morning, you know? Absolutely. So if and when, rather, you get out of the rat race, Adam, what are you going to do? What do you envision yourself doing? Yeah, that's an awesome question that I hope a lot of our listeners think about and take some time to think about because... Coming up with those things inspire you and keep you moving when you're having a bad day or a bad week and it's tough to get going. So a few things for me. I created this concept for myself called the freedom lifestyle. And so that's how I think about it. I will have a freedom lifestyle. And what it means for me is I have freedom from location. So physical location, right? My, uh, my family and I really love being up in the mountains. Uh, we love being up in the Rocky Mountains. And so we'd like to probably live part of our year there. Uh, we love the ocean. We love being on the beach. We'd like to live part of our year there. We love traveling. We'd like to go to the islands and be there for a while. We'd like we Europe's awesome. We'd like to spend some time there. So being wherever I want and having freedom about that, not having to be in a certain specific location because I have to go there for my job or for a work, you know, that kind of thing. That's complete freedom. Another component to it is a financial freedom to be able to do those things and not be constrained by money or resources to do that is another piece of that. Yeah, and I'm with you. I think that idea of being able to travel and see the world, the world is such a big place that to be confined to a nine to five for the entirety of my life as an adult is not what I want to do. Even if I absolutely loved my job, there's so much to experience, so much to learn that I want to get out and travel uh, I love your idea about having one place part of the year, another place certain part of the year. That's absolutely my dream as well. My girlfriend loves Montana. I don't want to stay there the entire year. I love the ocean, so I'll probably come back to Florida or Hawaii. Who knows? But that freedom is exactly what I want as well. Yeah, and we may not even split it into two. We may split it into several. And we've talked about this a lot 
having a home base, which is going to be Florida, because we, we actually really do like Florida. Um, so it'll be somewhere in Florida, um, on the beach for sure, on the water at least. And that'll be the home base, but we could go wherever we want. And then the last component to that freedom lifestyle is time, you know, freedom of nice. my time. So yeah. I don't have to be somewhere specific every day or when I, you know, when I must be there. I, I've got some freedom there. Time is a huge, huge thing, right? Being able to say, oh, instead of dedicating 40 hours to this, I'm going to dedicate 40 hours to something else. Uh, and I would also, like for me, when I get to that point, I want to teach others to get to that point as well. Because I think that along the way, you're going to build some relationships. You can teach people to achieve what it is that they want. It's not going to be easy, but I do believe that each one of us can attain something in that effect, right? It's going to take some work, but I would love to see others succeed the same way that I'm trying to succeed. Yeah, me too. Very, very big on that. And um, I used to be really interested in physical things, and I'm I'm not so much anymore. Uh, I'm definitely much more interested in experience. So a lot of people might say, well, I, you know, and I'm a car guy, so I totally appreciate cars. I, I saw a McLaren this week. Ooh, uh, which one was it? <laughs> I, you know, I'm not sure. I think it might have been the P1. Ooh, the P1 is my, if I had all the money in the world, the P1 would be one of the cars that I definitely need to have. Yeah, so it's super cool. I've, I've gotten to a place though where I'm able to totally appreciate them and not feel that I have to have the thing. So when I get wealthy and build this generational wealth, uh, I'm going to be focused a lot more on experiences and the freedom that I just talked about than physical things. So you talked about a lot there that I think that we should highlight. Being able to not compare yourself and appreciate something is huge. And I think that comes from knowing where you're going and knowing where you are in your journey. I struggle with that, right? I, I listen to podcasts. I follow people on Instagram that are doing the things that I want to. And yeah, subconsciously, you think to yourself, wow, why aren't I there, right? And it's tough to deal with that. But at that same time, you have to appreciate where you're going and where you're at at the moment. Because as long as you keep taking action, you keep networking, things are going to eventually click. They absolutely will. Um, in our you know, a, a recent episode, uh, I believe it's episode 10, uh, we talk about taking action. And if you continue to take action and you persist and you do not give up, you will get there. It will happen. Yes. Be persistent. Be consistent. Show up every day to do that. Now, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. You said you're not really into the materials. And for me personally, if when I get to a level where I do have massive disposable income and I've taken care of my family and I've you know donated and been philanthropic with it, the remaining money, what I would love to have is a watch collection. Oh, really? That's what I would like. Luxury watches, I think they're uh, the apex of engineering and style. I love that idea. And I love how each watch was founded upon a story of, of a purpose. You know, pilot watches, divers watches, and there's history behind them. That is, like I said, it's in the back of my mind, but after everything else is taken care of. Now, for you, Adam, you talked about cars. Would that be the the big thing for you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it would be, you know, I, I think about a lot of different ones and, and whether or not I would actually pull the trigger on spending that much <laughs> yeah, money on I them. Agree. <laughs> it's so hard to say from where I sit right now, right? Because I sort of have the view of the world that I have from where I am. Uh, and, you know, to spend a, a whole lot of money on a car like that might be tough. Um, but there's some, like, I really want a Jeep CJ7. Okay. And that's not a very expensive vehicle, right? Like, I think I can get a really nice Jeep and outfit it and everything for, like, less than 15 grand. Nice. Not bad at all. No. So I'm more likely to do something like that, honestly. Uh, and then those other beautiful exotics and the old muscle cars that I love and things, I, I honestly think I'll just continue to appreciate those at car shows and, and events like that. Yeah, if you think about, I think a McLe McLaren P1 will probably one, run you one point something million. I'm thinking to myself, wow, how many notes can I buy with that? Or how many apartment I complexes know, can we right? buy with that? I think the same way. Like, this has ruined me. 
<laughs> That's why I just don't think I could let myself do it. I mean, no matter how rich I get, but you know, I'm, I don't have the wealth of some of the people you and I follow. So Agreed. from that perspective, things would definitely look different. Another thing that I've wanted, that I've toyed with is this idea of a scholarship, uh, providing people with that opportunity to, to learn. Will it be f- for college? I'm not entirely sure. The more I learn about this financial education and think about success, I'm, the more I'm thinking, rethinking the idea of, of my kids having, having to go to college. Um, but if other people want to, and let's say they can't afford it, I would love to be able to have a scholarship that can help others out. Now, I love that. And I'm much, much more likely to do things like that than I am go buy a Lamborghini. A million dollars. Think about how many lives you could change with that. And that's a really big goal for me, is to change millions of lives. So that's more like what I will be doing with my money. I also want to uh, find a, a, a philanthropy where I can be on the board, right? Dedicating my time, let's say it was 20 hours a week, on the, on the board of some, a cause that I really am passionate about because I have the freedom to use my time however I seem ne- uh, deem necessary. Yeah, I think that that's a really awesome way to spend it. Well, this has been fun talking about some of the things that motivate us to achieve independence and freedom. And we would love, absolutely love to hear what it is that motivates you. And whatever it is, we would love to hear it generate a discussion about it. So let us know by going into the comment section for tgwipodcast.com or shoot us an email techguyswhoinvest at gmail.com. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, I, we would both love to hear some of your ideas, so send them to us. That's it for this episode of Tech Guys Who Invest. This is Adam. And this is Kevin. Thank you so much for listening to us. Don't forget to join our Facebook page where we're building a community of investors so that we can share ideas, tips, and other ways to help us get out of the rat race. If you found value in this podcast, it would mean the world to us if you could share it with your network. Lastly, we love feedback. It's how we get better. So if you wouldn't mind spending 30 seconds and leaving us an honest review on iTunes or Stitcher or whatever platform you're using, that would be super sweet. If you want to get on Adam or Kevin's calendar, go to tgwipodcast.com slash contact. We want to help you invest safely, wisely, and ultimately get you out of the rat race. Thanks again.